Danny. She feels empty. It wasn't what she thought it was. It's not enough. Every single thing that's led her to this point, and there she is, alone. We've all got this part of us, that part that goes, I'm gonna put that chocolate cake down, and I'm gonna walk away. We come up against those moral conundrums all the time. I'm not saying chocolate cake is a moral conundrum. Eat as much cake as you want, but those things that you wrestle with in yourself. She knows she has won this war. It's in that moment when she makes the decision to make this personal. It's one of my favorite Amelia performance moments because it took place on the back of like a giant green dragon buck without a real thing anywhere in sight. Amelia's really nice and she cares. She's a whole bunch of things that Danny isn't. So reaching this part of Danny is a, was a tough call for her. Ultimately, she is who she is, and that's a Targaryen. And you know, she has said repeatedly throughout the show, I will take what is mine with fire and blood. And in this episode, she does it. For the audience, oh, you wanted a battle? Well, here you go. Hi everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 6 finale trailer video. Obviously, there's so much to talk about. We have to talk about the footage, what's actually happening, our reaction to all this, and then all the things in the background that the show is paying off from the books, and what George R. Martin's supposed book ending is going to be, and whether or not that's going to be different from the show's ending. I've seen a lot of questions about that recently, like, if the show is doing this ending, does that mean that George R. Martin is going to change his book ending? So I will add some clips from that. George R. Martin himself has said a lot about that in the last couple of months since season 8 has premiered. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Game of Thrones videos. I will be talking about the Game of Thrones prequel TV shows in the next week, because that'll be the next big thing that we'll move on to this summer after they start shooting it after the Game of Thrones finale. So obviously the next couple of weeks will be us talking about the finale and the series as a whole, trying to put everything into context. But there is a bonus episode that they're going to air, sort of like an episode 7, the week after the finale airs, so two more weeks technically of Game of Thrones. You should be able to watch that episode the same way you watch all the other Game of Thrones episodes, so no worries. And there is a new round of that HBO Now giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. So starting with the footage, we have Jon Snow and Davos walking through the wreckage of the city, trying to take it all in, Tyrion doing the same thing in a separate part of the city, with the same look of shock and horror on his face that he had after Season 7 Episode 4 when Daenerys attacked the Lannister troops. There's a shot of Arya walking around the Unsullied troops, looking up at Daenerys as she walks out of the Red Keep to address everyone, a wide shot of the Unsullied in formation, and all the Dothraki cheering in victory with their rocks held high. Big surprise if you thought that all the Dothraki were killed during the Long Night episode. There was so much confusion after episode 3 that they had to come out and say, no, they lost half of their forces, because the way they filmed it made it seem like that went down way differently. Then you get that final shot of Daenerys slowly walking out from behind to make the post-war victory speech and proclamation about her new world order, so to speak. This is how everything is going to be in my new kingdom. But the thing is, is the music through this whole trailer is very ominous. And you look at all the Dothraki formations marching around and synchronicity and all this symmetry seems very sinister within that context. You can make as many allusions or comparisons to real world tyrants, but obviously I think this is just the beginning of what could potentially be a run at a mad queen. So even though she kind of turned during the episode, and Amelia Clark tries to explain that, how Daenerys sort of succumbed to the worst things within her, how we all fight that moral conundrum, and the way she sort of talks about it, Daenerys spiraled out of control. So this is just the beginning of that descent. And you have all these other characters, the main characters, trying to figure out what they're going to do about it next. A lot of them look really confused, except for Arya Stark. So you have a situation where Daenerys is basking in the ashes of her victory. I don't want to be the queen of ashes, but yet look at all these ashes falling around her. And I think they're trying to mislead you a little bit into thinking that Arya is going to be the person to end the threat of Daenerys. Like, she's clearly got that look on her face like she's developing a plan. So I definitely think she wants to try and deal with Daenerys. But think about it this way. There's still a chance that the show could pay off a couple really big George R. R. Martin prophecies from the books of A Song of Ice and Fire. The prophecy of Azor Ahai, the prince who was promised, and a couple of Daenerys' biggest visions from the House of the Undying that we're just now seeing unfold on screen, particularly the one of her in the Iron Throne Room, but also a couple of the other ones in there too, because you re-examine those visions in the context of what's happened the last couple of episodes, and they mean very different things. And like you talk about foreshadowing, the official poster is Drogon's eyes transposed with the Iron Throne. I think that Daenerys is going to wind up destroying the Iron Throne literally with Drogon because Aegon the Conqueror, when he was making the Iron Throne, had to use Balerion the Black Dread to melt all the swords down. 
There have been a lot of book readers ever since Dance with Dragons was published that have wondered if Daenerys is going to be Jon Snow's Nyssa Nyssa within the Azor Ahai prophecy. That's just one of George R. R. Martin's biggest prophecies that seemingly foreshadows the end. We've just all been thinking about it in the wrong context, that it was all about the Night King, when really it seems like it's more about this end game with Jon Snow and Daenerys. So if you're not familiar with the full text of the story of Azor Ahai, it reads like this. Darkness lay over the world in a hero, Azor Ahai was chosen to fight against it. To fight the darkness, Azor Ahai needed to forge a hero's sword. He labored for 30 days and 30 nights until it was done. However, when he went to temper it in water, the sword broke. He was not one to give up easily, so he started over. The second time, he took 50 days and 50 nights to make the sword even better than the first. To temper it this time, he captured a lion and drove the sword into its heart, but once more, the steel shattered. The third time, with a heavy heart, for he knew beforehand what he must do to finish the blade, he worked for a hundred days in a hundred nights until it was finished. This time he called for his wife, Nissa Nissa, and asked her to bear her breast. He drove the sword into her living heart, her soul combining with the steel of the sword, creating Lightbringer, the red sword of heroes. Then the story goes on to say that Azor Ahai didn't fight alone, he had people helping him, and he thrust his blade through a monster, and the monster burst into flames. So for the past six, seven, eight years, maybe even longer than that for some people, have wondered if Daenerys will be Jon Snow's Nissa Nissa. He'll kill her to prevent her from becoming full Mad Queen and quote-unquote forge Lightbringer by thrusting Longclaw through her heart. That would also fulfill Daenerys' prophecy in the House of the Undying, the three heads of the dragon, three treasons you will know, once for blood, once for gold, and once for love, because Jon Snow loves Daenerys too much to see her turn into the Mad Queen. The Easter eggs that they're paying off from Daenerys' visions in the House of the Undying, you probably recognized a couple of them too, particularly the destroyed Iron Throne Room, because Daenerys was literally destroying the Red Keep during last night's episode. The Three Heads of the Dragon prophecy goes like this. Three fires you must light, one for life, one for death, and one for love. Three mounts you must ride, one to bed, one to dread, and one to love. Three treasons you will know, once for blood, once for gold, and once for love. So remember, this is a book prophecy. They didn't do it on the TV show because some of the characters that fulfill this prophecy are characters that the TV show did not wind up doing. Of the three fires you must light, one for life was Cal Drogo's funeral pyre that allowed her three dragons to hatch. One for death was the burning of the Dothraki cows during season six on the show. One to love was the metaphorical fire that she lit in her heart for Jon Snow, loving someone again after Khal Drogo, like she told Sansa earlier this season. The last man that I love was taller, so that means that she never truly loved Dario Naharis, so sick burn on Dario. But like in last night's episode, they're standing in front of that fire while she's confessing her love for Jon Snow and he rejects her. So you could also interpret it that way too. Of the three mounts you must ride, the one to bed was either a Khal Drogo or you could look at it as the white horse that Khal Drogo gave her on their wedding night. Its name was Silver. One to dread was Drogon. They called Balerion the Black Dread. You dread dragons. And the one to love is obviously Jon Snow. She mounted Jon Snow. Of the three treasons you will know, once for blood, once for gold, once for love, the one for blood was Illyrio, probably because in the books we find out that Book Aegon was really his son and he's a Targaryen bastard, not a true Targaryen like they're telling him he is. There's a whole other storyline that the show has cut out with the Golden Company in a whole other version of Aegon that might wind up being Illyrio's illegitimate son. The one for gold was Brown Ben Plum in the books. He was one of the second sons who betrays Daenerys to join the opposing Yunkai army when she was still fighting them. Then obviously the betrayal for love is probably Jon Snow when he kills her, like I said, because he loves her too much to allow her to turn into full Mad Queen like the Mad King, her father. That would be the bittersweet, tragic ending that George R. R. Martin has been warning us about this whole time. And when you think about Daenerys' visions in the House of the Undying on the TV show in that bittersweet context, the scene in the throne room makes a lot more sense now. She's victorious, she's won the Iron Throne, she's taken King's Landing, but the castle is in ruins only because she's destroyed it herself, and instead of snow falling around them because it's still winter, it's the ashes of everything that she's just burned. So she's in the throne room, she's the Queen of Ashes, and she doesn't actually get to touch the Iron Throne. She comes within hand's reach of it, then has to turn away to walk through the door, which in earlier context, before we got in these final episodes, most of us thought was just her getting a vision of the coming of the Night King, like she would go beyond the wall, she would lose Viserion. 
But now, when you think about the potential ending of the show, Daenerys dying at Jon Snow's hands, this vision of her walking through the door might be her leaving the world of the living, a vision of her death, like she's passing into the afterlife. It makes a lot more sense then that she sees Khal Drogo and her baby Rhaegar because they're in the afterlife now. So if she were to die, then she would join them in death and get to see them again. Depending on what you actually think happens after death within the world of A Song of Ice and Fire, Jon Snow claims that he saw nothing. He claims it was all just black. So I think a lot of that is open to interpretation. So it seems like George R. R. Martin has always been foreshadowing that Daenerys would be the final threat of A Song of Ice and Fire based on a lot of the internal monologue she gets during her POV chapters and what her fate would be at the hands of Jon Snow based on a lot of the clues that he lays in all these prophecies and foreshadowing. I think the biggest criticism of the show is that the show has just done a very poor job at adapting that narrative and pacing it out so that all the character turns and foreshadowing makes sense by the end. That's probably the biggest comment that I've seen about this last season is way too rushed. We really needed a couple more seasons to do this story justice. So then you ask, how different is the TV show ending going to be from George R. R. Martin's book ending in Song of Ice and Fire? So here's a clip of what George R. R. Martin had to say about that. I don't think Dan and Dave's ending is going to be that different from my ending because of the conversations we, we did have. But they may be on certain secondary characters. There may be big differences. He's trying to say that the ending won't be exactly the same. There'll be a lot of secondary characters and lesser stuff that's a little bit different. Some of the players will be a little bit different. But the biggest characters like Jon Snow, Daenerys, Arya Stark, Tyrion, all the things that happen to them will be pretty much the same thing that happens to them at the end of the book story. The follow-up question that I know a lot of you have, though, is that now that everyone's going to know the ending of the story, will Martin go back in and change a bunch of things? Because it's going to take him years and years to finish Dream of Spring. We don't even have Winds of Winter yet. This is another clip of him talking about whether or not he would change his story just because people start to figure out what the ending might be. But what do you do then? Do you change it and come up with something goofy and outlandish that you haven't led the, you haven't done the, the foreshadowing for, that you haven't laid the foundation for, just in order to surprise people? I mean, sure, I could have like aliens come down and that would certainly <laughs> surprise the hell out of everybody. No one is predicting that, but uh, <laughs> it, it would ruin the series. He's given that interview a couple different times and he always says pretty much the same thing. So even though a lot of side plots might change a little bit, the really big arcs and the really big beats for the huge characters won't change that much. So obviously it's going to probably be like 10 or 12 years before we actually find out what the real book ending is for Dream of Spring. So we'll check back in 10, 12 years later to see how different the TV show ending was. But like I said, what's going to happen is, is the Game of Thrones prequel will start filming this summer. There's actually three in development, but only one of them is shooting right now. That's going to premiere next year. And George R. R. Martin is working with other people, not Dan and Dave. Dan and Dave are not involved with the Game of Thrones prequel TV series at all. They're going to go off and do their own thing. So they won't be involved with the Game of Thrones franchise anymore after this. I'll talk a little bit about what's going on with those prequel TV shows in the next couple of weeks, but leave all your requests in the comments below. Obviously, I'll be doing a Q&A video, so leave all your questions in the comments for that too. Congratulations to the giveaway winner from my last big video. Machete Yo, please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Click here for my Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 5 video from last night, and click here for my Episode 4 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.